the monolithic story began while David was still in high school with his interest in dome building. By 1975, David and his two brothers, Barry and Randy, had successfully built their first monolithic dome, a potato storage facility in Shelley, Idaho. That project resulted in a patent for the process and launched an innovative construction system for monolithic dome homes, schools, churches, sport and commercial facilities. My father took a bunch of people on vacation through Mexico. They kept driving off of the main road and seeing all these places where very, very poor people were living. He was quite disturbed by the conditions and he was seeing the cardboard houses. He thought to himself that there had to be a, a better way where we could build more efficiently and better so that he could actually help the people in Mexico. And that's when he came up with the idea for the eco shell. Welcome back to Profiles in Caring as we continue our story now from Indonesia. And as construction efforts begin to take shape, we go inside Domes for the World. Welcome everybody to the official celebration of the beginning of the construction. Basically this area particularly was chosen because the village up there was completely destroyed and the mountain caved in and it wasn't like they could just rebuild the house on their same land because it was dangerous. So they asked the government to be relocated completely. Well, we got there and it was just a, that was a rice field, that whole area. We graded it, cleaned off the rice field, and we started building for there. A little bit different than Idaho, it rains a lot here. <laughs> so had a had quite a challenge figuring out where the water was going to go when it rains and getting it drained into the river properly so that we didn't have flooding or puddles. We watch it rain and then we tweak it a little bit <laughs> and we watch it rain again. And we've also upgraded the road system substantially. When we got there, it was a one foot wide motorcycle path made out of concrete. Everything you see is done by hand. Even the asphalt, they, they put a little rock down and then they get tar out of a can and spread the tar on it and then roll it. And all of the, the ditches, everything's done by hand. I've been building concrete dome homes for over two years. And then I got offered a position to come supervise a project here in Indonesia. Wes Haas is a boy from Idaho. I'm from Idaho. My dad's from Idaho, and my cousin's from Idaho, and we're all from Idaho. And Wes just has that Idaho ethic. I'm going to get this done, and we're just going to do it, and that's how it's going to be done, and everybody move out of the way. He gets things done. As we started out, there's been a few people that have looked at this thing and thought, oh, it's a dome, it's different. People talk about traditions. But then as people saw them go up and as they walked in them and looked in them, they really have started to change their mind. And I really think there's going to be a huge, huge demand for these things in the future. This is kind of a test. We've, uh, we've selected this part of land, we built 72 houses, and it's just, it's a sample for the world. A lot of people will look at this and uh, see what domes can do for the world. Well, the dome is thin shelled concrete. The concrete's two inches, reinforced steel. We put in a footing and floor, we pour it all together, and then we attach that, this uh, vinyl balloon, to that footing and inflate it. Once we have it inflated up to pressure, we have guys climb on there and uh, put rebar in a grid pattern over the entire structure. <laughs> and then they mix concrete and put it on by hand in uh, two or three layers. We just turn the air off and the balloon folds back in undo it and put it on the next dome. One balloon, can we can build a thousand houses with it. If we had the system in place and everything was ready, which we do here now in Indonesia, we have equipment, we have air forms. If there was a disaster and we had, we had the project ready and in place, we could build permanent structures so fast. I can walk onto a property and I can walk off in six days with a finished dome ready to move in. The people who will receive these homes, what kind of buy-in do they have? 
the government's not giving them the land. Their piece of land, they're going to purchase for like monthly payments. So they're getting the gifts, the domes is a gift, but the land is their cost. I think the door's open. All right, <laughs> we come in. Great, well, uh, give me the tour. This is a completed dome we have furnished just to kind of show what it could look like. There's a living room, and we have bedroom here. Bedroom on this side. Wow, so much room. Not bad size bedroom. This would be like if we we're looking to buy a condo. This would be the model dome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Exactly. This is our kitchen. You're thinking family of four to five, you say? Yeah, we got two bedrooms plus the loft upstairs. We can easily fit another two beds up there. Mm -hmm. So you could have family of six, no problem. I feel very, very comfortable here. Now, wait a second. We've been through this whole house. There's an upstairs. Yep. Uh, now, I'm six foot three, and it's still not too bad up here. No. Quite a bit of room. Now, I notice these don't have uh, bathrooms in them. Tell me about the bathrooms. As we talk to the villagers, they kind of, they're used to this whole the women getting together communally, the bathroom facility is kind of a gathering point. They do their laundry and they shower. And it's just kind of the way they live here. So for every 12 families, there's a, they call it an MCK here. It's a bathroom facility, toilet, shower, and uh, laundry. We've tried to really focus on upgrading their lifestyle. So we have installed uh, deep water wells to have clean water and a bathroom facility and a full American septic system. It'll make a huge difference in their lives.